Hi, everybody, and welcome to this latest episode of the Export to Japan podcast. And today we're looking a little further into the implications around the recently signed CEPA, CEPA, the, the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement between the UK and Japan. And in particular, we're focusing、uh, a little bit more on the agriculture and food and drink sector. And to help us discuss that a little bit further, I'm delighted to welcome Jonathan Eckley, who is the head of the Asia Pacific region at the AHDB. Hi, Jonathan, and welcome to the podcast. Hi, good to see you. Yeah, great to have you on board. Thank you. Maybe if I could kick off, I don't want to make any assumptions. So perhaps if I could kick off, if you could tell us what AHDB stands for and what your organization does, that would be a great start, please, Jonathan. Yep. Okay. So AHDB is the Agriculture and Horticultural Development Board based here in the UK. So we're funded by farmers and processors in the agricultural supply chain. And we help them、um, here in the UK, but also on international markets. So, a big part of the remit of AHDB is to help producers and process develop markets. So, some of that's in the UK, and then there's a small team of us helping them develop international markets. Okay, excellent. All right. And then, drilling that down to you personally, what, what, what are the areas or the markets that you're involved in and responsible for? Okay, so I lead our activity across the Asia Pacific region. For the livestock sectors. So that's beef and lamb, pork, and we also do some work for the dairy sector. So the region I cover basically goes from India across to Japan and down to the Pacific region. Not that that Pacific region is big for us in livestock products, but also but Asia is obviously pretty key to that in some of the sectors I work for.、Um, so from India, where we see a longer term opportunity going through you know, far, the Far East, and obviously we're here today to talk about Japan. Which is a really interesting market for us. So, I help exporters develop that market. So, we've got two issues or two areas we look at in, in export. Market access is one of those, which、um, obviously is key to have access to the market and trading conditions that work for the sector. And then, once we have access to a market, what my team does is actually help those exports develop those markets. So, work with partners in market through the embassy in Tokyo, for example.、Um, To help get the message out there that the UK is a supplier of high quality food.、Mm, okay, I've got you. That's excellent. So, does your role mean that you get, I mean, at the moment, none of us can travel, of course, and we haven't been able to travel for the last 12 months or so. But, but, it, but when we get back to the normal world, does that mean you get to travel out to these countries? Do you spend much time get, getting out? Visit. Yeah, the, me and the team, we generally would spend、um, quite a bit of time out in market. It's very unusual that I haven't been out of the UK for 12 months now, and I'm very keen to get back there.、Um, so, yeah, we do it, you know, a number of activities in Asia. You know, historically, trade shows have been a really important part of what we do. And a trade show traditionally would provide a really good platform for UK exporters to get out to market. Showcase what they have to offer and really importantly, meet a lot of people.、Um, and FoodEx in Tokyo, for example, is a strategic show for us. Unfortunately, the last time I was at FoodEx was 2019 because the event was cancelled last year.、Um, it actually ran at the beginning of March this year, which was really exciting. Unfortunately, we couldn't get there ourselves, but DIT and the embassy put on a British food pavilion. So we were able to support that in terms of the meat sectors that I work with.、Um, we have an agency in Japan to take advantage of that. So trade shows are important. Also, missions to market. So, particularly when we're new to market, and Japan's another really good example of that. When we gained access for beef and lamb, which we actually gained access on the 10th of January 2019, in recent times, we were able to coordinate a mission of meat exporters to go out to market. So, it works really closely with the embassy there. And the point of those missions is it's really important for exporters to understand the dynamics of a market. Now, you can do that in reports, obviously, reports. But to go out and experience the market firsthand and see what is happening is important.、Mm. And obviously, the key thing is to meet the people. And again, and as we know, and particularly important in Asia is the face to face contact. So, taking exporters out to market and what I like to call speed dating, we organize <laughs> sessions where, you know, and we all know once you've sat down and spoken to somebody face to face for 10 or 15 minutes, it's much easier to pick the phone up afterwards and do follow up for that.、Mm. So, the key part of those missions, for example, would be you know, experience the market, see what's going on, but really important to meet the market participants. So, they're just kind of two examples of where we'd probably spend 15 or 20 weeks a, a year overseas.
Wow. And, you know, I'm proud of the team at AHDB and my colleagues working domestically how we've had to pivot pivot into the digital world to Ooh. maintain momentum in the last 12 months. But I know, you know, it's it's um, it's important to meet people and we're keen to get back there when we can. Now, we don't mm. know when that is, so we're still going to be in this space where we're trying to do stuff digit- digit- digitally, if I can get my words out. Yep. Um, and that's been key to maintaining what we're doing. Yeah, okay. That, that's excellent. And clearly, you you know your stuff. You've got your experience of doing business in Asia and in particular in Japan. And I, I totally echo some of those points you make about the key priorities of how to do business there. So, so <clears throat> you know, acknowledging the point you've just made that we, we don't have a crystal ball at the moment, and none of us have got visibility about how things are going to map out. It's, it's looking encouraging at the moment particularly here in the UK, think things are rolling forward with the vaccine program, et cetera. But I mean, would it be safe to say that whenever the time is ready, when we get the all clear and we can all start traveling again and we're okay on this side and countries like Japan are open again, would that very much be part of your strategy to be running some of those missions and taking some UK companies over there as, as part of your plans for the future? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, you know, in, in the shorter term, we've still got a job to do. So we're going to do bits and pieces in the virtual world. And whether that's doing some trade seminars online, using the time wisely in terms of consumer insight and finding out what's going on in Japan. So we can then clearly target our message to meet the right people and get the right messaging out there. But I do think there's a big appetite from the research we've done, not only in Asia, but with our UK stakeholders there is a big appetite and that face-to-face meetings are still going to be key. Now, trade shows, for example, I think, you know, in the short term, very, very challenging as we can, as we know, I actually think this space we've had where we will have a period for at least 12 months where we haven't been able to do any trade shows. I think it actually re-energize those trade shows because I think when we do come out the other end, um, there will be, I know there will be a big appetite from exporters point of view and from in-market participants that those trade shows, for example, will provide a really good cost-effective platform to meet a lot of people. Mm. So I think it will, you know, when we're in that safe environment to do that, I think they will be re-energized. And obviously we'll take the digital learnings and the virtual learnings, you know, and everybody talks about a hybrid model. I'm not quite sure what that looks like right now, But what we have learned by pivoting into digital is to use those assets to our benefit to attract people who we can then meet face to face at the appropriate time. Mm, Yeah, that's such a good positive message. And it it, it makes sense exactly what you're saying. And it's yeah, it's something very uh, encouraging and optimistic for us to look forward to when when that day comes and hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah, can't wait. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Me too. (laughs) I um, I, I was interested to pick up, you, you mentioned there that you have an agent that you're working with in Japan, and we're always keen on the Export to Japan platform. It's always interesting to learn about um, organizations and companies' journey into Japan and things. So could you just touch a little bit on what that agent does and what that role is and how you work with that agent, please? Okay. Um, well, it was quite lucky that we were down a path for procuring an agency right uh, 12 months ago when the when the pandemic hit actually so it's new to us in in japan so we appointed a food and drink specialist pr agency and our driver for that at the time um was to increase awareness of britain being a supplier of high quality protein particularly in my case because i'm really focusing on beef lamb and pork in japan so, the, the, you know, the idea behind that was to have somebody on the ground that understands the market to help us get that message out there in an innovative way. Part of that would have been we talked about or I talked about missions was helping us coordinate missions, because as well as taking people out to market, we wanted to bring some key influencers over from Japan to experience what the UK has got to offer firsthand, because there's nothing better than bringing people to see what a wonderful supply chain we've got. We've got the heritage that goes with it um, and that combined with latest technology and production standards to help showcase our offer and then take that message back to Japan. Now, obviously some of that's been curtailed with um, the lack of travel. So what we've done is, you know, moved that into the digital space. They've helped us host some trade seminars where we've been able to get in front of people in the virtual world and have a really good discussion, A, about what we've got to offer but also trying to understand what they've got to offer because it's really important as exporters and somebody like me trying to support exporters is we understand the dynamic of the market and what people are looking for, be it food safety, tradition, quality, taste, and all those kind of things. So we've done that kind of face-to-face stuff in the virtual world. 
And what we've also done is we're using that time wisely to create lots of digital assets to support that um, PR work we do in the lead up to getting back to market when we want to use that in modern media, traditional media targeting chefs and importers to help tell our story in that digital way, to help get that engagement. So when we get to market, we, 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 we've hit the ground running, so to speak. Yeah, that's, gosh, that's really exciting. Yeah, it sounds like a good relationship and uh, a lot of value that's being added from, from that relationship. So yeah, good, thank you for sharing that, really interesting. Um, okay, moving on to, I mentioned in the introduction, this, this uh, SEPA arrangement. I mean, what, what did that mean for you? I, and, and by the way, I'll just mention to our audience listening in, we, we don't intend to dive into the great detail of SEPA on this discussion. And there is content on the Export to Japan website for anyone that wants to dive in and really understand the inner workings of it. But just at a general level, Jonathan, what were your views on the SEPA arrangement when that was announced? Um, I mean, it's just really important to us. Well, the, the key thing to have is to have fair access to a market. So as we exited the European Union with their FTA, it was just a really important milestone for us to maintain the, option, or the opportunity we have in Japan. And for my sector specifically, you know, last year, I've got some figures I just jotted down here. Japan is a massive importer of beef, 681,000 tonnes last year, nearly 500,000 tonnes of pork. Lamb, not so big in volume, but high value, 25,000 tonnes. So the opportunity there for us to explore that market to the benefit of our exporters and our producers here, it's really important that we have those agreements in place. So we're just not disadvantaged by not having it. Hmm. Yeah, got you. Understood completely. Yeah. And th those kind of numbers that you're giving there, the, the, the sort of size of the imports that Japan is making, are they are those figures you're quoting the UK imports or are they the imports in general that Japan has? They're, they're Japan, the Japan imports in general. So Japan, you know, it's, it's, it's always been or has been a, a big, big importer. Yeah. So us gaining access uh, for beef and lamb um, only two years ago was really important. Yeah. And, you know, first year last year or the first full year, we did we did two and a half thousand tons, oh, which okay. is really encouraging. So, you know, um, yeah. it's, it. it's it's a good opportunity for us um, yeah. to look at that market for high quality, high value product into food service, for example. But also, you know, what you know, um, the convenience market is really important in Japan. So there's also products we've got in different space that can go into manufacturing to go into that convenience market. So there's an opportunity for us at both ends of that market. Yeah, I mean, from what you're saying, it really does sound like there is huge opportunity there for UK agriculture companies and, and food and, and drink companies. The, the opportunity is certainly in some of these sectors, as you're mentioning, where we're literally just really scraping the surface of, of getting our market share. There's got to be a lot more for us to go to go for. But it certainly sounds like the work you're doing is going to be paving the way and uh, and getting us in good shape for when these markets sort of open up and the opportunity to get out there and do more business uh, presents itself. So, OK, well, that's really good, Jonathan. I mean, that's covered the points that we wanted to, to discuss on this. And uh, and I just like to summarize by thanking you for, for, for giving us some of your valuable time today and, and sharing some of those insights. Great to know about more more about your organization. Great to know what you're working on, and uh, and it sounds like you're doing some great stuff. And uh, look forward to seeing how that progresses once these markets open up and we can all travel again. So, thank you so much for your time today, Jonathan. It's been great chatting with you. Pleasure.